Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Verse 6. Verse 8. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. It will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. There's purpose. When God shares his word with you, when the Holy Spirit opens up the word, it's with a purpose. It's for a purpose. It is sent for a specific purpose. When you hear scripture, when you hear the word of God, it's for a specific purpose. And the Father believes that you will, and I will, that we will truly focus on his purpose in sending forth the word. So I, I pray, I plead with you, first of all, to have such respect for the word that you will not be busy with other things. Amen. You will not be on your phone doing other things. Otherwise, please not be here. Then rather be here and make a decision. I will not focus on the word. Are you with me? Why? Because God has an agenda. He's always ready to fulfill His word. He's always ready. Holy Spirit is always ready that when the word goes out, the Holy Spirit hovering, Genesis 1, then God said, and immediately there was light. When God said immediately, Holy Spirit reacted. And my prayer is that Immediate, immediately from your spirit, there will be a reaction when you hear the word of God. And that we will get into that lifestyle. And if we can practice that for these two days, just to practice that, to practice that, that when I hear the word, I will not teach myself how to let the word just go past me. Hello. I will not let my soul, my emotions determine if I'm interested or not. I will not let my intellect and my thought patterns determine if I'm interested enough to respect the word that God wants to impart in me. So shall my word be. It will accomplish for what I sent it for. God has sent forth his word. And when you hear the word, it is not just I'm hearing the word. It is sent from the Father into your life. And God has the faith that you will accept it and respect it in such a way that it can bring forth a 30, 60, 100-fold harvest. If I like the way that it's been given, if I can lacquer connect with how it's been given or not, it's when you hear the word and you can recognize the word. You can recognize the voice of your father. You can recognize the description of your master Jesus Christ. That's the word. You can recognize that will, will, that will, will never, 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 ever pass away. All the other things will be shaken. And even so much more for what is laying ahead when we're looking at next year and what's coming in the future in the, among the nations. You need to make sure that what, what is unshakable is part of your life. There's something inside of you that's unshakable. And you choose to ignore it or you choose to respect it. And you choose that Holy Spirit in this season, in these two days even, will build in your life that what is unshakable. Unshakable. And the devil and the Lord will shake everything so that the enemy hopes that you will break. God believes that his word will manifest. And the unshakable in you will come forth. It will come forth. I know, you know, when people get into negativity or in issues or into whatever, everything is shakable. Every relationship 
become shakable, become un, what do you call it? Unshaky, you know, shaky. Yeah. Everything. And tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, issue upon issue upon issue, emotions up, emotions down, this to the left, that to the right. But the more I choose to get into the Word, the more I start to love the Word, to hunger, you know, to drink water is boring, therefore I will not drink water. How can you reason like that? Are you with me? If the water is not presented in the right way, even though I'm very thirsty, I will not drink it. Because the one bringing the water is not bringing it in the way that I wanted it to bring. Or I don't like necessarily the person. I'm not talking about me. not somebody else. I don't necessarily like the one that's bringing the glass of water. Therefore, even though I'm very thirsty, I will rather faint than take the water from that man. Why in the church it could happen like that? Your spirit is so hungry for the word. It has such a thirst for more of the Holy Spirit. So that when you hear the word, when the moment you receive the word, immediately the spirit is there also. So it's not just, Holy Spirit, come and fill me. But when you allow the word to fill you, Holy Spirit will be there. Because Holy Spirit is 100% faithful to the word of God. Amen. So you are open to the word of God, the Spirit will fill. You are open to the word of God to receive, Holy Spirit will work in you. Holy Spirit will confirm. Holy Spirit will bring the 30, 60, 100 fold harvest. Holy Spirit will be there and he will work in you. If you are open for the word of God. If you have a respect for the word of God. And when you hear the word, you choose to respond. Because Holy Spirit testify in your spirit. What? The word. The word. There's testimony. There's testimony. And every moment when we speak, every moment when you read the word, every moment somebody is testifying about the word, or even when tomorrow, maybe tonight, but definitely tomorrow, we're going to push with word, where we're going to declare the word. My brother, my sister, I pray that you will be so locked into and locked with, so connected with the word. So with David, why will there be an issue? Only if I'm not connected to the word, then I will have issue to be able to connect with David. So my issue is not with David. My issue is with the word of God. That I am not mature enough or I'm not willing enough, I'm not loyal enough, I'm not faithful enough to the word of God to connect to the word. That says put your everything for the unity. Love in spite of. Give yourself. If you hate your brother, if you have an issue with your brother, you have an issue with God. If you say you have no issue with God, but you have an issue with your brother, you're a liar. What does that mean? The word around you is fake. What is lying? It's words that is fake. The word around you is fake. When I have the issues, and many times the issues with myself, hello, how will I get over the issues with myself? I stop having an issue with God's word. But if I can respect the word, if I can take the word, if I can appreciate the word, if I can embrace the word, if I can desire the word, 52 stuff, 52 things, hey? In Psalm 119 that you're supposed to do with the word. Go and make that list. Some of you guys remember that we did that? Hmm. Esther. 52 things, different things that you must do with the Word of God. You must write that down. Psalm 119, you're going to get the 52. Amen. Are you with me? So my brother, my sister, I pray that that will be so. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. 
That is, I'm coming, and I'm coming to focus, to focus on Him, to focus on Him. That means other thoughts, other words must go in Jesus' name, because the words take my focus away. I hear this, I hear that, I'm busy with this, and it takes my focus there. Are you with me? Well, I hear the word, and the word helps me to focus on him. So through the word, I choose to focus. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him. Call on him. What is it? It's you put on your lips the words in prayer. Where through the prayer, through the words that you say, you aligning your focus. You aligning your focus to seek him. In prayer, yeah. I had it, maybe not you. Sometimes you can get really bored, can get really frustrating, can really like somebody praying and praying and praying and praying. But if there's anything about the Word of God, anything about sincerity, anything about genuineness in that prayer, and you can put it before God, it's helping you to seek Him. It's helping you to focus on Him. Amen? Are you with me? Call on him while he is near. Why do you need to seek him? Why do you need to seek him? God is ex actually explaining what he asks you to do, what he commands you to do. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways. Unrighteous, their thoughts, thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord. He will have mercy. He will help them in a very practical way. And to our God. For he will freely pardon. He will forgive. There will be room for you. There will be room. There will not be condemnation. Why all of this? Because my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your ways, not my ways. If my ways are these ways. My thoughts, his thoughts. I don't need to seek him. I just know what to do. But God says, because his ways, not your ways. His thoughts, not your thoughts. That's why you need to seek Him. That's why you need to seek Him. Are you with me? The one entering the palace, and I need to see the king. I need to hear his thoughts about the following. I need to understand his ways. Therefore, I enter the palace, and I need to see the king. Because I desire to know and I need to know and I cannot go and live here in this place in this country in this nation if I don't know the ways from the king the ways and the thoughts of the king about the following facets boom 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 that's us being together today and tomorrow and you choose to learn how to focus and respect more, or you choose to learn how to disrespect and wara wara when you hear the word. So that after the two days, you will be worse, ten times worse than when you came and sat here right now. That you will be ten times worse. Learn how to more be more blasé, wah, 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 about the word of God in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let it not be so in Jesus' name. But it will be the one or the other one. There will not be a thing that you will stay the same. Somebody's thoughts will be honored. And if you don't push his thoughts in there to say, I want to know your thoughts, your ways, Lord, more of you. If I don't do that, I automatically choose that there will be more other thoughts from other Things, my flesh, circumstances, spirits. There will be more of those thoughts and less of God's thoughts. But the one or the other will happen. And that is not even in this, these two days. But that is a principle for life. That is a principle for life. You've seen that in your life, I've seen that in my life. You start to become negative. You will not just be negative. Like this, the negativity will grow. It's just the way it is. And then you will start to think certain thoughts 
that one year ago, you never had that type of thing. Unless it's something that you struggle the whole time with, yes, that we need to stand together. Are you with me? May the rain come down. And the rain, the word is coming down like the rain, because God has the faith that you will receive what it will bring forth. So if the word comes down in these two days, and you receive from the Holy Spirit, and you receive what God has for you, his word, like the rain. In the first day, it's not like everything has grown. Flowers, trees, everything. Expect everything to be different next year. Because how you positioned yourself this year, at the end of this year, for next year. You say, God, I need your word as rain so that I will see the landscape of my life, of my soul, of my circumstance. But not first of my circumstances, but here. Because circumstances could go worse. But the landscape here, the landscape here, the landscape in how I say, how I speak, how I relate, how I position myself, everything can change. And it will automatically change. Why? Because God has sent forth his word for a purpose. It will accomplish what it was sent for. Let's say God's word is sent forth for a purpose. It will accomplish what God sent it for. Amen. It will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. God's word is sent forth to the earth, into every nation, into every situation, into every city. Why will certain things not happen if I cannot take that word and go with the word? Because you are sent forth in this nation. You are sent forth wherever you are. In this spiritual family, in this spiritual ministry. Wherever you are, in whatever nation. But you are sent with a word. And you will go with that word. If I am sitting with the depression or the negativity... I am sent forth with the word of negativity. But a word is sent forth to accomplish. A word with an issue, with a temper, with a, with a frustration. And the word of frustration that you honor, you will go with that word, and this word will accomplish what hell has sent it forth for. And hell sent forth that word of frustration and irritation and negativity and that. And you will go with the word from hell. And it will be fulfilled what it was sent for. It was sent forth with a purpose. And you decide, I am sent. I am sent by what? It all depends with what word you are going. Then you will know. You are sent. I am sent. With this negativity and this issues and this judgment from hell to you. Why? Because I'm coming with a certain word to you. Or I'm sent forth with a word that's from heaven, like the rain that came down, that came down. And I'm sent forth with that word from heaven into your life. And so you will find in every nation, you know, churches and God to help us. And people that can be so misled with, call it conspiracy theory, or this, or that, or that, or that. And we will go forth. But the word of deception will be the sign of the end time. The word of deception will be the sign, not the control. Because if you are sent forth with the word of God, the word of God cannot be controlled. Except by the Father. That sent it forth under the Father's control for certain things to be established here on earth. And God says, seek me. Seek me. Seek my face. And then you will understand what word is sent forth from me. And go with that word and it will accomplish what it was sent for. Ah, my brother, my sister, are you with me? Let's say I'm appointed. I'm anointed. Because I'm sent forth. 
the anointing, a certain anointing will rest on this word. Anointing will not rest, rest on the word of religion. But a different anointing will come and land on that word. You speak the language of that demon of religion. You speak the language of that demon of frustration. Hello? That demon of impatience. That demon of no grace. That demon of whatever. You speak for that word. You are putting out, like we said in the past, you're putting out that, that's London stroke. In English? Landing stroke. That thing for the airplane to land on. Landing strip, man. Not that you must go and strip yourself. You must, that's a landing strip. And you create it with your words. When you talk about this one and talk about that one and hear this word. Hello? You are creating the landing strips for that airplane, that demon. That demon of whatever. To come and land very easily. Safely into your life. No fight, no crash landing, nothing. You've created the room for that thing with what you think, with the word that you embrace, the thought you can take into captivity to keep it here. If it's the word of bitterness, the word of judgment, if it's the word of depression, if it's the word of you, you put it here and you create the landing strip for that demon of depression. That demon of negativity. That demon of frustration. Or, I take the word. And it means nothing at that moment to you. It means nothing. And the fact that it means nothing tells you you must seriously take it. If you are, if you are just excited about the word. I don't say then you mustn't take it. But it means you've taken it already. If the word doesn't touch you. If the word does not resonate with you, if you can hear the word, but it means nothing, then it means you seriously need to take the word. Then you need to take the word. Are you with me? So that you can build, build, build that landing strip. So that when Holy Spirit brings, you just experience how Holy Spirit comes. And he opens up. And he opens it up. And the Holy Spirit, you will be my witnesses when the Holy Spirit come over you. And you will be my witness. Yes, you will be my witnesses. What about what? About the word. About the word that is in you. Holy Spirit doesn't speak about himself, remember? But he will remind you of the word. And he will open up the word. That's the only thing that he will be faithful to do in you. But if you don't get the word in, of what must he remind you of? But if you hover and you entertain these other thoughts, these other words, that demon from hell can explain why you feel like that. It can explain how you are, why you are justified that you have withdrawn your heart. From that cutting edge, walking with God. From that into the lives of other people. Into the commitment relationships where you said yes. Hello? Uh, and those spirits are ready to remind you of what he did. And what he did. And why you cannot trust this one. And why you cannot do this. And why that cannot happen. And he will explain to you that demon. But some spirit going to explain some word to you. And remind you about that word. Because that's the pattern from the Holy Spirit. And the devil can only be a copycat. He cannot bring something new. So you keep a thought. Demonic spirit or Holy Spirit will explain that word to you. Make it firm in your life. Remind it. Remind you of what happened. And explain why you are justified. Holy Spirit will remind you how awesome, precious you are. And explain to you the Father's heart. Why he will be always there for you. 
I saw you. I pray that you will have a desire. And that as we speak, those who hear Holy Spirit, they will, I want to say, they will write down, especially, but if you remember everything, it's okay. But if there's something that you know you need, you will write it down, I know. God had to challenge me a lot about that. But I'm just saying, it all depends. How precious the word will be for you. My brother, my sister, you don't build the foundation. Don't say, why did God allow this? Why did God allow this to happen? No. You built it in such a way that it must happen. And that hell has the authority to accomplish that in your life because you chose to build your life in that way. Or you lay a certain foundation. Now, this will be my thoughts for next year. This is what I will think about next year. This is the thoughts from my king, from my master. And I chose to say, I will lay down my thoughts because his thoughts is not my thoughts. And from that position I start. And that's why God says, seek me. Call upon me. So that my thoughts will become your thoughts. And you will not have to draw those dropples, the dropples, the rain from, from the clouds. It will come on, come on you by his grace, because of his love, because of his grace. The rain will come down. It's not your gravitation power. That's gravitatie kracht. Gravitational force. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't. It's not yours. It's, it's part of the earth. When the rain comes down, it's not because you did something. It's just God's mercy, God's grace. If the word is out there, it will, God will organize that it will come to you. It will come to you. It will not go there, it will, it will come to you. If you have a hunger, if you have a hunger, if you have a hunger. Amen. Be saturated with the word. So is my word that goes from my mouth. It will not return void. God, give us grace, give us mercy. That So there will be the word from hell, from the mouth of hell, from the mouth of Lucifer, from the mouth of that devil. It will come to you. It will come to you. But then what will you do with it? You will not seek it. You will not respect it. You will not let it take root and have an impact on you. Because like the word that will come down, and it rained yesterday, and there's a lot of pula and, and, and a lot of stuff, but only in time certain things will come forth and the landscape will change. So you start to think that innocent thought, but it's rubbish, and you know it's rubbish. And it will just come down, you know, not like a Bjarlachstral. It will just come down. And then the next day or one month later, you cannot believe, if you're honest, what happened to that fire in me? What happened to that mercy, the grace, the passion, the love, the room, the respect for others? It was there. But somewhere, I've built a landing strip for some or other's destructive spirit. The thief comes to kill, steal, destroy. And you will see the killing, the stealing, the destroying, even through your mouth to others, even through your attitude to others, even through where God has, would call through the Holy Spirit, would call you. And you just think about your name, but it was the Holy Spirit, and the thoughts from heaven, from his mouth, was to pray for her. But because other thoughts are working you about her. And it's not like you have this issue of the name. But it's just, therefore you will think about her and I wonder that what they are doing. And that's it. Because it's not an open channel. Hello? But when you think about that person, maybe it's just to say, God bless them in Jesus' name. Ah, Lord, let them have a wonderful time. God help her to submit, please. 
free with blessing. Hmm. Not like that. Are you with me? May his working word work in you. It is sent forth. You are sent forth. You are sent forth. When they came together, Holy Spirit said. When they came together, the rain came. The rain came. Are you with me? God has such a desire for you to think the way that he thinks. He has such a desire for you to have the same heart as his heart because he wants you to do it with him. He will be with you, but you cannot do the stuff with him next year. What he's going to do, you cannot do it with him unless my thoughts becoming his thoughts. You can set up the syllabi, you can do your studies, you can work on the farm, but it will have no eternal value because you're not doing it with him. But if you can understand certain principles to do what you do as if unto the Lord, and you have your time with him, and certain things are, are happening in your life, at the end of the day you are tired in your body, but you are quickened and you are strengthened in your spirit when you've done it with him. There's no way that you will do something with God that your spirit is tired at the end of the day. Never, ever, ever. Impossible. But when you do it for Christ and with Christ, under the guidance of Christ, your spirit will always be strengthened at the end of the day. Even your body is tired, your spirit will be strengthened. That's it. But soul can mess it all up for us, man. Hello. So if I struggle all day with my soul, I'm tired in my body after the day of work, but I'm more, ten times more tired because my soul is tired of all the whatever happened in day. Are you with me? I pray that for you. I pray that for me. That we will do what we're going to do next year. It will be really for him. That day by day we will grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory. Where? From my spirit. My spirit will be strengthened, 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 and it will just go from strength to strength, week by week, day by day, month by month in 2022. It will be so because what I'm doing, going to do, I'm going to do it as if unto the Lord. Are you with me? And sometimes if I feel discouraged, I go to God because maybe I wanted to do something for the Lord. Now I feel discouraged. Maybe it's because my thoughts, even my heart was genuine. My thoughts wasn't his thoughts. My thoughts. Let's bring down the fire. Lord, the two disciples told Jesus. Peter says, over my dead body, nobody will kill you, Lord. And he could feel discouraged. That after he pledged his loyalty and he gave his, said, I will give my life for you, Lord. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Huh. So we could face disappointments in our relationships or in what we trusted God for. And we are discouraged because it didn't happen. Or what we said, it was confusing. And in the confusion and the stuff. I will choose to go walk away with frustration, with a word of frustration, or I will walk closer to him even though I don't understand what I've heard. His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So I take time with God so that I can hear his thoughts. No, that will not just happen. You will hear it easily, but to understand it and to identify that it was his thoughts. Because normal human being, what I don't understand, I put there. What I don't understand, I put there. What I come to understand, I embrace. And I put it down in my life. I let it find roots. Let it find roots. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. Eh? Is it in Peter? It's 3-3. Three, three. Either Titus 3 3 or. Oh, somebody help me there. 
So that means it's alive in me. The word is alive in me. Are you with me? Because this word that is alive is working. It's working. It's working and in its work it will accomplish what it was sent for. And achieve the purpose for which I sent it. The word will work. Everybody say the word's going to work. My question is whose word is going to work in you? The word from hell is going to work in you or the word from heaven is going to work in you. That's it. And in my life, there's certain words from heaven that's working in me, you know. But there are certain words in certain areas of my life from hell that's working in me. Why? Because I'm not Jesus. I'm not perfect. And I need to, and I need to tell myself, I'm going to cut off these channels from the word that is from hell. Because that word on my tongue, James 3, tongue that is lit up from hell. It's like a fire lit from hell. What is on the tongue? Anybody? Colossians 3, 16. Okay, you have it. Not Colossians 3, 3. Okay. As you met me. So my brother, my sister, I pray that our tongues will be lit from heaven. Oh, James says, can be lit from hell. But you know, then we see, worth, who was it? Ezekiel had to eat the word, the scroll. Was it Isaiah that had the coal, the, the fire, fire coal on his lips? Hello? To say, God has taken away your sin. God has taken away the iniquity. And what you will bring forth will bring forth, will be from heaven. Amen. Amen. It will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it, the word. So we're going to have time with the word to these two days, and we're going to push with the word. When we're going to pray for two, three, four hours, everybody praying tongues for two, three, four hours, while one by one, we're going to just declare the word. We're just going to declare the word. And we're going to push in the spirit what we believe God wants us to push with. So that it is deposited in the spirit over us as a family, over the ministry, over that what God has for us as a group. Amen? But that from that place, we take it also for us individually. So we're going to push with that two, three, four hours tomorrow. But let's come with an expectation. And when your mind is wandering, you go with warfare. You tell your mind to shush by praying in tongues. You feel frustrated, you keep on praying in tongues. We're going to push that we're going to learn how to stay in his presence. How to wait upon him. Wait has to do with time. I need to wait. It means I need to go beyond frustration, beyond irritation, beyond being impatient beyond. Has Yellow met me? Wait is not the desired thing normally to do. We can say, I, I'm resting in Him. Also, I'm still before Him. Also, I have peace before Him. I'm just at home. But wait has to do with something where you come against something. Wait means I must. I, 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 uh, he has the context of I, I choose to stop. I choose not to go. I choose not to go. I choose not to move. Why would somebody say, wait, because you wanted to go? You would want to go now. <laughs> but wait is a command for the one that would have went if there wasn't a wait. As you limit me. So put that as a principle so that you will wait on the Lord. And in that place of waiting, I choose against my flesh that want to go, but I built in here a desire just to be with Him. And then it becomes easier to wait. 
It becomes easier to wait because it becomes a lifestyle to be with Him. A lifestyle to be still before Him. A lifestyle to be in His presence. Amen. The little kitty. Wait, we cannot go and buy that now. But if he can learn how to enjoy what he has now, even if he needs to wait another year to receive that, how can he enjoy life now? But if the waiting is just a moan and a groan and a frustration and irritation and it becomes an attitude and a this, because I cannot have that thing now. I cannot have my car or my cell phone or my this or my that now. But if he can embrace how to enjoy life now while he must still wait for that to happen. Hello. For many years, God said, embrace your bachelorship. Embrace what you have now and the fullness of what you have now. And for so many years where I could take it, then there was fullness of life in Christ. Are you with me? So learn how to be before him. Amen? In the waiting, with an expectation on him. And then waiting doesn't be, become hell, but waiting becomes beautiful. You can say that waiting must become beautiful. Waiting cannot be hell. <laughs> because after somebody had to wait, they can be very frustrated. I don't know why. I don't get it 100% right yet. Maybe 90%. But when you drive and you need to be at a certain place and there's somebody in front of you or you, you are you're evaluating your road ahead. You know it's red, it's turning green and it's turning green, you know it's going to turn red. When you are just, but just when you are getting there, it's turning red. And then the next one also. And the next one also. Then by the tenth one, the joy of the Lord is supposed to be my strength. <laughs> Hello. But maybe it only happens to me. But it's, I mean, what a pathetic thing that it, it can disturb me sometimes so much. But... It's only me. You can pray for me. Thank you. Okay. My eyes are met, mate. You with me? Oh, come on, man. May God help us. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. There's a reason where there's sometimes a red light. There's a reason why there's sometimes a red light. You're listening, mate? Mm. So God will show you. God will show you. In what way? We're going to go to, actually, my weak word. What's the time? Anybody? Quart for 12. Okay. We will wait for the food. Amen? As we eat this food. Ne. Amen. Rase. Good. Luke 10. Will you open up there? And I want you please to write down a few, few things. Just ask your neighbor, are you awake? I ask you, are you awake? Okay. Can you believe it? Praise the Lord that we have 28, 29, and 30 degrees, and not 36, 37, like we had it before. If I can feel how I feel now, on 29, oh, wow, wow, yeah, good. When you hear the word, have a waiting, have a waiting, that means have an expectation. So if somebody has a certain attitude, a certain thing, I'm waiting for him to flip. Because I know that's what he's going to do. I'm waiting for this because I know how he's going to react. Anybody had that in their lives? I'm waiting for that to happen. 
And you are, you are so intimate in that way. But now I'm asking you. That's just the fake, the copycat. What about I'm waiting for God to connect that in my heart. I'm waiting because I know what I'm going to hear if it's scripture, if it is something of the word of God. If I like it or not, if, I, if it's so intense, nice or not, I'm waiting because God's going to make it alive. I'm waiting because Holy Spirit is waiting here with me. And when I hear the word, he's going to let it happen. And it was evening and it was day. The next thing. Second day. Next level. Third day. Next level. Fourth day. Next level. So, every next level of what God has for you. Amen. Let it be so. Chapter 10. That's for the next three days. Luke 10. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. Let's say, where he was about to go. If you can write that down. He's sending you to every place where he is about to go. Wherever he wants to go, he will send you into that place. He will send you into that place. Now, now let's, let's go a little bit back to Isaiah 55 again. He will send forth his word, and his word will be fulfilled. But who is the living word? Christ. So at the end of the day, when the word of God is fulfilled, it means Christ is seen in that situation. Amen. He's sending forth his word, and his word will work. His word will work against the word of the enemy. His word will be taken by you and me to prepare the way, to prepare the way, to prepare the way for the King of Glory to enter, for his majesty to enter. Are you with me? Yeah. So you being sent forth is because God wants to go there. Let's say God wants to go there. You go here to the to the Felford. God wants to go. God wants to go there to the weeds. Why? So so when I'm there and I have my time with God, guys gonna walk here. People gonna I have some sport here. People are going to do some stuff here. But they will find Christ. They will find Christ. Because God's going to be here. People are going to come on this premises. God's going to be here. You're going to be compared. God, I'm here because you want to come here. And what do you want to do in people day? Are you with me? Yes. Are you with me? Yes. This other day I had to turn around. And give a word to somebody again. But I say, be open, be open, be open. You are being sent forth. Amen. You are being sent forth. And when the word accomplishes what it was sent for, it will show Christ. Amen. Christ will be seen. The living word. If the word is alive in you and is dwelling richly in you, woe and what will be seen? Christ. The living Christ will be seen. Yes. Amen. But you talk bitterness, you talk bitterness, the demon of bitterness will be seen. Yeah. It will be alive. That person will come alive. When he's talking about this, this issue about that political leader. And you've seen that. Somebody's like this, and when he starts to talk about somebody, he's being zerked up. You know? You just, some, you just mentioned that name or that person, and that person is zerked up. Because that spirit is alive based on the word that that person took in his heart. And he meditated on that word and he counted as precious. So, you must be stirred by the word of God. Stirred by the word of God. Amen. You with me? Who of you guys saw people that they gave their lives to Christ and they are so over the moon? Let's talk about the weather there, just there. Yeah. Anybody saw people like that? Yeah. Those guys that were atheists, 
when I talk to them about the, the Trinity, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Oh, how does that work? <laughs> and I was laughing about it. And it he was like, I'm not so excited necessarily, always, many times, at that stage, definitely not, to hear about this, 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 and how things work. We talked about spiritual warfare. They were so excited. They were so excited. I was going to pray. Things going to happen. And then things started to happen. They were like, I cannot say I felt ashamed, but I couldn't believe the excitement in them, realizing that I'm not living with that excitement. You know? And may we become like little children to enter the kingdom. May we become like little because then God can trust us with authority. When he says enter the kingdom, that's now another point, whatever. When you enter like a child, you can be genuine with the authority. When you enter in this way, the authority, you can abuse the authority. You can abuse the authority. Hello? But if you enter like a child, and with the genuineness, you have an authority. Let us, let, us, let us go with that. Amen? Some of you guys, sometimes somebody can, can have something like a little child, how they see certain stuff, but, but it opens up something for them that is good. Remember I told you about those days with a, it was called the Toronto Blessing. You pray, lay hands, and everybody just boom, 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 fall over, and everything is just happening. And this one small boy, he, he came to me and said, pray for me. And uh, he put up his hands and I started to pray for him. He took my hand away. He said, you must tell me when I must fall over. <laughs> but I mean, he just went like, boom. <laughs> you know, take my hand away. He was telling me. I said, no, if you fall over, you fall over. If you don't fall over, God still works. God still works. So I pray for him. And next moment, boom. Also. Now, I just want to hear what he experienced, you know? Because at that stage, also, sometimes you had guys that ran for the manifestations and not necessarily for what is God going to do. And that's where that type of thing goes wrong. So, after a while, I, hung up, I said, so what did you see? Who remember the story? One. And, uh, he said, no, I stood at the bottom of a, of a big mountain. And yeah, there at the top, top of the mountain was, was, a, was, a, was a karate. It was a small car. And I stood at the bottom of the mountain, and the car came down, and it drove over me, and it drove over me. Boom, I fell. <laughs> and I was thinking, <laughs> God interpretation, please. There was nothing. <laughs> So I asked him, so what do you believe God said to you? Why did show you things? You know, and his eyes, he said, God said, I must be naughty. <laughs> okay, that was the whole interpretation. How he got into that, I don't know. But he believed it full out. That's what God told him, you know, when he fell over and when he was praying for. Now, you're not going to destroy that. Huh? Come on. Yeah, as they can't help him, and he just enjoys life with Christ. Let me so. But what I'm saying is sometimes in small, I want to even say insignificant, insignificant ways, God wants to open up simple things for you. Please don't lose that with all your responsibilities and all the things that must be sorted out and all the things that you must stand by faithful before the Lord. Don't Forget that innocence, the beauty of simplicity. Don't forget that innocence, because in some very simple innocence will unlock for you to enter a level of authority. That's enter the kingdom. Who will enter the kingdom? Who will enter the authority from heaven? That when you walk in a place, the authority is there. When you walk in a place, devils must know their place. They know, I have no authority here now because that man entered the building. 
that man entered the building. So I, I have no authority anymore. Is it a mate? Oh, I want that. I need that. But for that, I must become like a little child. I must become like a little child. Amen.